Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Let's dive into today's conversation regarding life's myriad transitions and how we refine our responses in our relationships, our wellness, our households, our work, and in our practices. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have uh, somebody I really admire with me today. She's Houston-born, El Salvador-raised. She is Latina. She has worked in television production for Univision, MTV Latin America for 15 years in Spanish language networks before she became a stay-at-home mom, but that's not all. She also launched a blog called Spanglish Baby, a blog for parents raising bilingual, bicultural kids. Within a year, this guest was able to monetize blog posts for about 40 bucks and she found herself building a small community. And soon she has built one of the most active blogs to date, helping to connect Latina bloggers and influencers from her online community to a whole network of other bloggers in this community. That became Latina Bloggers Connect in 2010. Six years later, she rebranded that. It became Hashtag We All Grow Latina, a Latina owned self funded website that elevates the voices of Latinas and provides them with resources. And then We All Grow, shifting this mentality of lack to mentality of abundance, became an entire free online community that's available both in English and in Spanish, offering original content, mentorship, wellness sessions, resources, connections, access to virtual and in person events. And that became the We All Grow Summit. That summit happened in 2015, in 2016, 17, 18, 19, and then it stopped for COVID. At which point, our guest, Ana Flores, decided the We All Grow Summit was a little too much. And even though it was amazing, and I think that our listener, Ana, has had this experience We're finding now that the things that we love to do are not necessarily the things that are easy to do, not necessarily the things that bring us ease, and we have to recalibrate, which is precisely what you've done. Last year, you founded Las Founders, founded in 2022. This was an event that sort of replaced the We All Grow Summit, if I'm not mistaken. Is that true? It was a separate one-day event. We came back a little bit too strong last year. Let's put it that way. Tell me more. What do you mean? Yeah. So we, the community really, really wanted the summit to come back. We All Grow Summit. It had just become larger than life, right? And our life, it had become larger than what it originally started in 2015 as a place for Latina bloggers and influencers to really come and connect with each other and and receive resources, as you mentioned. And it started really growing as the community grew online, right? So that started looking like entrepreneurs, like career professionals, like just really ambitious Latina women, you know, looking to be surrounded in a safe space by other women that looked and sounded like them and had come from the same type of backgrounds and different communities and even within the diverse, beautiful community that we are, but that we were all there to support each other. So We All Girl comes from our motto, which has been around since day one in 2010, which was when one grows, we all grow. But what happens with that is that we kept elevating our own standards, right? We kept creating these beautiful events that just became so connected to each person. It is hard to meet people's expectations at each time and every year surpass our own expectations. And 2022 was the big one, right? We had been gone since 2020. The community, as many online communities during the pandemic, flourished. Our online community, it's called Amigahood, which is friendship hood, basically, 
Mm-hmm. Grew from, we had launched it in 2019 in a mighty network. When the pandemic hit, we had 5,000 members. Right now we have over 23,000 and growing with a super high engagement rate. So we met the community where they were at, and that's what we always continue to do. So going back to your original question, by then our community had grown so large that the summit's almost like this dream space that means so much to everyone. That carries a lot of burden for us as the organizers, right? <laughs> trying to be it all for all. And it's a three-day event with some of the most influential Latina voices, you know, uh, the production cost behind that, the production cost behind finding a gorgeous, beautiful, natural setting venue, the organization behind it, et cetera. It is really tough to sustain, as many event organizers will tell you. It's one of the hardest things to do. And we are a small team. We are a small but mighty team. We're completely 100% Latina owned and run. We are self-funded for 13 years now and continue to be. We are funded by brands, by the campaigns that we work with. And I love to say that we alchemize our dollars to bring something significant to the community while still meeting their marketing objectives, um, which is hard to do. Beautiful. Yeah. So last year we decided um, we brought on board a new event called Las Founders, one day for what we call women with an entrepreneurial spirit. So we know in our community, over 50% um, self-identify first as entrepreneurs, but those 40% that identify as career professionals, out of that 40%, around 60% of them have a side hustle, have a business on on the side. So we know that that's a beautiful opportunity. We know that that's who we are. Right? We always are creating and doing something. So we wanted to create a, a one-day event, a space for them. And that's what we tested out last founders last year and really realized that being able to, to focus the message, focus the intention, allowed us to also create from a more focused place. And that really the message that we were seeing was that what we faced as a company last year was a lot of this disentanglement of everything we had created. We had become really big over the pandemic, right? My team grew from five to like 25. We're back to 12. (laughs) Um, Just really seeing like how we needed to present ourselves in the world. And we were seeing this, everybody being overwhelmed, burned out, um, experiencing that in our own company, within our own team, within myself, And realizing that that was really not what we wanted to put out in the world. That was not the invitation that we wanted to put out. And the summit, you know, the more we looked at it and see the shifts that it brought, the theme last year for the summit was Sanctuary of Joy. So we were really bringing in that invitation of show up with joy in your life. And we accomplished it, right? We accomplished the intention. We accomplished the beautiful, massive shifts that happened there. But it came at a huge cost and a huge toll to us. That was not congruent in my life. Right, right. Tell me, I have so many questions. First of all, I know that this year it's going to be two days, Lost Founders. I'm a little jealous that I'm not Latina and I can't come. Oh, you're invited. Of course you are. We need allyship. I'm 99% Eastern European Jew. (laughs) Yep. So it doesn't fit. However, if you want me, I would totally come and like lead anything you would want or just be there. It sounds like it's going to be magnificent. So you going from one day to two days, this is one of several questions. First of all, it's going to be in October of 2023. Tell me about that choice and why. You know what? So a lot of what I do, and I have gotten better throughout my life to allow space to inform myself on what the next moves are for me and for the company. And I gave myself a lot of space and time. Like I have learned to not make rush decisions because when I can put myself in this beautiful, more spiritual container, I can allow myself to receive really and be guided and where I need to go next. And a lot of the decisions of what we do come from that place, which is also why we don't have investors because I don't want to be guided by that. Right. So yeah, I get that. I get that. Which is, it's the, the long and hard path. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But I really feel the more rewarding and Slowly but surely, um, we're getting validation of that. But going back to that, the summit was three days. And because we had to create content to fit the needs of so many women in our community, not only their diverse identities, but also, you know, what they do in life. 
And at the same time, we also brought in what we call HEAL. So our three pillars as a company are HEAL, Commune, and GROW. In that order, we believe that as a community, there's still so many wounds and ancestral wounds, um, systematic wounds, et cetera, that we have, that we still continue to deal with. And we really need to put front and center our healing. And then doing that in community, right, is definitely amplifies it. And that's where we see from that space, we can then grow. And we bring in this sense of wellness, conversations and spirituality, et cetera, into everything that we do. So the summit, one of the tracks was what we call HEAL, which really we integrated what in 2018 and 2019, we did a one day event called Wellness Day. Our mutual friend, Diego Perez, young Pueblo, had, was a key mm. for both. So we were, actually gave him the first stage to talk on. That was the first time. I remember he had like 35,000 followers. I was following this account, Young Pueblo, and I'm like, he has to be like, I'm like is this person or, yes. not or not? Like, I don't know. Like, how do I find out? And I dug, I dug until I found like a random podcast episode where he was talking about his, you know, Ecuadorian heritage. And I was like, oh, I need to invite this guy. So anyway, we continued to having a really deep friendship and he asked, actually will be keynoting this year again. So last year, um, what happened was that we pretty much integrated Wellness Day into the three-day events, and we gave people a lot of opportunities to choose, but what happened was that it was too many choices, right? They were like, we want to do it all, so that's who we are. We just want to do it all. They wanted to do like the deep dive, more entrepreneurial career talks, financial wellness talks, and they wanted to do the cacao ceremonies, right, and the ecstatic dance and everything mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. So we decided to instead bring in those two well-loved one-day events, Last Founders, which we proved last year, then Wellness Day, which had been dormant since 2019, bring it back into one epic weekend. So it's called the Weekend Fest. Day one, Saturday, October 21st, is Last Founders so that we can really hone in into those conversations in the entrepreneurial sphere. And then day two, we can go and sink in deep with Wellness Day. So Less Founders, our invitation, our theme is Thrive With Ease. And Wellness Day, it is connect with your innermost self. So we really believe that in anything that we do in life, like I said, healing and wellness, overall wellness um, has to be in the forefront. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I'm actually really excited. Where is this conference being held? Long Beach, Hotel Maya in Long Beach, California. Oh, that's easy. Wonderful. Water I love flying runs. into that little airport. Yeah. Oh, we love, isn't that the best airport? <laughs> it's the best airport. Why would anyone ever fly into any other airport than Long Beach? It's like there are five cars to rent, by the way, if you are listening and you want to go and you need to rent a car, you better do that now. Um, okay. Another question. We went from this big summit, which I feel was a thing for a number of years prior to the pandemic. Let's do a summit, a summit, a summit. And it was like a big, giant undertaking. You have to get your sponsors. You have to plan the space. You have to plan the food. You have to plan the speakers. Like it's massive Mm -hmm. undertaking, even for a small summit. In speaking to you just before we clay to record, we were talking about how you really made this conscious choice to go from that to a two-day event that's a lot less, let's say, intensive. I would like to empower our listener, dear Anna, with this possibility that maybe things don't need to be as complicated as you think. And maybe you can create something that's even closer to the bone, closer to the heart, and more true. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about this transition? Oh, gosh, yeah. There's so many layers to it, but it really starts with that belief, that calling in of wanting to, what we're saying, thriving with ease, right? Of prioritizing ease in our life and of choosing that we can create time and that we can create space instead of time and space controlling us. Mm. It comes a lot from the belief systems, right? Of the people around us telling us what success looks like, what we should be doing next. I don't know if you hear this all the time, but it's like, oh, we love your podcast. You should have a TV show. Oh, we love your TV show. You should have that. Oh, you should have this. Everybody always has like loving words (laughs) of of advice and suggestion of what you should be doing. And sometimes it's just about sitting and seeing what you are already doing 
what comes in with ease, what comes in naturally, what is just easy for you to manifest and manifest abundantly, and then continue pouring into that. It has become so validating to to be the woman that can do it all, right? There is even like a side of our identity that takes so much pleasure in being able to say, I can do it absolutely all and look at how I can do it in this beautiful perfection. And I have the Instagram grid to prove it, right? To show it. Of course. But then we know there will come that tipping point where it's not all going to be, you know, like I don't like using the word balance. I actually have like a different visual for it, which is more like having all these different, you know, filling our cups. So having like this collection of cups where it's your family, you know, if you're a mom, your your children, um, your business or your career and in the center of all that, the you and how you choose every day or in a different moments to pour into the cup where you need it, where it needs attention. And it won't always look the same. It won't always be equal. But I think really when you see it that way, you can see in your own business, in your own career, make decisions from that place of what is going to allow me to continue pouring into all of those cups. And it's not the being busy all the time. We've been sold that. We've been sold that because that is part of a system that wants to keep us stuck in the busy instead of in the creation mode and the actual creation attraction mode, right? Like how can I position myself always in that attraction mode? So for us, listen, the summit is not gone. It's just an incubation mode, right? I didn't want to feel the pressure of having to create that all over again in less than a year. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, the summit, it, these things need to happen every year. Who says so? right? Like I can change that paradigm. We can just listen to the community and see what they need. And obviously we also need to fit the needs of our sponsors of the brands and the clients that we work with. And, and I feel that we're pretty good at that of kind of seeing where the ethos is in general and where we can gravitate towards. So the summit is in incubation mode and in manifestation mode where when it comes back, it's going to come back with its own resources in place. Mm. This is very empowering to me. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like I, I feel I'm constantly looking for ways to edit things to make them half as long, to make things simpler. Like that's really a practice of mine in my emails and writing half it, <laughs> make it half as long. Mm-hmm. But this is a real paradigm shift. And I think for our listener, it's an important one to hear and to consider the fact that you might be able to simplify things. Yeah, and I think it's a contrast that we need right now as as life becomes even more accelerated with technology, with AI, with all of these beasts that are growing right now, right? What is the counter to that? What is the contrast to that? I often think about how all these conversations are being fed to the AI. Mm, Absolutely. Oh, my God. It's so daunting. So lastly, we're sort of nearing the end here. And I'm very interested in hearing your answer to this question. What does prayer mean to you? It's connection. Mm. It's connection. Connection immediately, it was, I'm going to say, with God. I grew up religious. I am not religious Mm -hmm. to my mom's Mm -hmm. detriment. (laughs) She really wishes. To your mom's chagrin. Yeah, chagrin. She wishes. Yeah. I know there is a side of her that really thinks that I'm not going to reach like a full potential or full happiness because I don't go to mass every day and I don't take my daughter to mass, right? Every day, every week. No, but for me, it is connection with my innermost self. It is connection with God. It is connection with my guides. And it is bowing down in humility to ask for help and to give gratitude. Right. These are the questions that I used to ask early, early on in my podcast of every single guest, and I really love them, and I'm bringing them back. Let's do it. If you had to name your favorite view, it can be inside or outside. It can be within yourself or somewhere in the world, anywhere. It could be somebody's neck. (laughs) What's your favorite view? So, Oh, gosh, because I I was going to say, right, the typical, like, out in the ocean, but then when you went in deeper, it has to be when I have really beautiful moments of connection with my daughter and we're just really looking each other in the eyes, being allowed to have those silent, quiet, deep connection moments with my daughter. That's my favorite view. How old is she? 15. (gasps) The best. 
Yes. Oh my God, the best. I have to give you my parenting course, actually. I'm going to send it to you oh, as a gift. Oh, I love it. So yes. thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, and I have a new question that's only for you. Favorite book that you're reading right now it doesn't mean that it's your favorite book in all time it's just the favorite one that you're reading at this moment okay so this might not be fair because <laughs> i so many latina women are coming out with amazing books so i got to read an excerpt from one of my favorites and i just cannot wait her book comes out in january and uh, just the extra i was like please send me the galley i need to finish reading it it's called Breaking the Cycle by Dr. Maria Albuque. Hmm. Oh it, my goodness. It's all I need about to get her on the podcast. Oh, Elena, you definitely do. I will be happy to make the connection. Amazing. Um, her work is centered on intergenerational wounds. Yeah. That's what's and, up. Mm -hmm, she goes very deep in really uncovering it. And it goes beyond that to like creating a path towards healing and the invitation for us to be the cycle breakers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that. Last question, I promise. If you are breaking a cycle with the work that you're doing, the parenting that you're offering to your child, what is that cycle that you're breaking? In my own, um, my own lineage, I am going to say the cycle of not feeling supported, the cycle of abandonment. I want everybody to feel supported. And but the ultimate support is the support that we get from within ourselves. Ooh, that's so good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. I feel like we've covered all that I wanted to cover, and I like to keep these podcasts brief. Is there anything that you would like to add for the sake of our listener, anything that you're feeling called to say? I think continuing what we were talking about and just really, it's okay to take it slow. It's okay to say no. We talk about a lot about boundaries, but I, it's really hard sometimes to create boundaries. I like to call them loving boundaries and to discern the difference between a boundary that comes from a place that needs healing or a boundary that comes from a place of actual self-love. Right. Um, so a very loving boundary. And I think all of that can happen and we can access if we just take it slow. If we find slow spaces, those soft spaces within ourselves, whatever that looks like for you. I'm promising this is my last question, but it's based on what you just said. I promise, promise. If you had to say, share with us one way in which you are slowing things down definitively in your life, in your household, with the caveat, of course, for our listener, that if you have toddlers, the two of us are actually in a very different chapter of our lives, different season. Our kids now want nothing or very little to do with us. And actually, that's not true. My kid still digs me, but and I'm sure yours digs you too. But at this point, it's like much more hands off. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what you do to slow things down, Anna. Oh, and, and thank you for that caveat, because I remember being a mom of a toddler and no family around. All of my family and her dad's family are all, you know, don't live in California. And and remember hearing all these advice and being like, oh, yeah, that's easy for you to say, right? <laughs> like, how do I apply this? I have no help. But yeah, I have definitely, and we hear this a lot, and I think there's a reason why, but I definitely incorporated a meditation practice and I emphasize the word practice because we have to be very proactive in creating that space in our life. And, and actually my daughter has really been modeling that for me as well, right? And seeing how it has impacted her when she sees me deep in my practice. So I've created space with that. And then I've also been very proactive about my weekends. My weekends are sacred. My weekends, I don't work and I encourage my team to not work. And to never feel like they have to, unless we're doing an event, of course. But we are very, very proactive about that. And even uh, giving one Friday out of the month as a team collectively, we have uh, a wellness Friday. So that, you know, as a team, we all shut down and there's no expectations of everybody. So um, incorporating, you know, being conscious about those practices within my own life and within and modeling that for the team as well. That is so refreshing. <laughs> As a person who owns my own business, 
and I do most everything myself. It's like, it's very hard mm-hmm. to claim a weekend. Thank you for that. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's needed. It's those little, little pockets, right? And then yes. we give it, a, give it our all. And then we have those pockets. Yes. I just took my kid away on a trip very, very far away to Asia. We were gone mm. for 10 days. It was the first time since he was born that I did not open the laptop while I was gone. Oh, I'm sure he appreciated and noticed it. He totally did. It was Mm -hmm. so relaxing. Yeah. I'm so thankful for this talk. I feel like we hit on a lot of really important, seemingly mundane matters, but they're really not. And I hope you, our listener, picked up on the importance of really respecting your rest and your space and your time and your family and slowing down. And maybe you're thinking about something that you're going to dial back or slow down now. I hope that that's the case. Um, Ana Flores, your career moves me. Your clarity touches my heart. Your beauty is, of course, not to be ignored. And I really appreciate your time in coming onto the Practice You podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the invitation. It is a real honor. And thank you for leading the path for so many of us, for allowing us to see what's possible with your voice, with your words, with your insights. You definitely have led the way. Thank you. Thank you you so much. Mm